What I have learned in life is if you are open to new knowledge, it will serve you well, right? And if your reaction to new knowledge is, I don't know that, and you have this reverse reaction of like anger or uh, you feel insulted because you didn't know, so you dig in a little harder, no, that's not the way it is. That is a, a pathway to stupidity, okay? The way that you improve yourself in this world is to come across new knowledge, expand your mind, and try to understand why things are the way they are, why people choose the words they choose, so on and so forth. And this is a great example for you is the Atmospheric River. Now, this channel, we've gone over this many times on Interior Weather and Wilderness Watchers. We've got 38,000 people there, but there's a lot of new people. We've gone over this many times on the channel here, but there's a lot of new people. This is not a word we invented to scare you and to help the government for some un understandable reason that you can't quite explain to me. Okay, let's go. Let's explain what an atmospheric fucking river is. Let's go. There it is. This is bad news. My God. Falling out right now. Anything could happen. Get on! Wow. I'll watch the video later. They try mopping this. Bullshit myth one. The term is less than 10 years old. Not true. These guys right here, Yongju and Reginald Newold from Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, they officially had it coined in 1998. Of course, they were working on the idea for much longer than that. So the term has been around for almost 30 years now. So what is an atmospheric river and why are we using that term? It's not just to upset you or scare you and there's no hidden agenda. I mean, what, what does it make a difference if we call it a pineapple express, a rainstorm or an atmospheric river in terms of the government? Government. Like you think this somehow is like part of a government agenda to like screw you over. How? I get it. You you are insulted because these new terms are out. You don't understand them. And rather than, than try to understand them, you just dig your feet in a little bit deeper. But for those of you who want to understand, that's what this video is about here today. And for those of you who don't, you're stupid and I'm sick of you and shut your fucking mouths. Okay, atmospheric rivers are relatively long, narrow regions in the atmosphere, like rivers in the sky, that transport most of the water vapor outside the fucking tropics. While atmospheric rivers can vary greatly in size and strength, the average atmospheric river carries an amount of water vapor roughly equivalent to the average flow of water at the mouth of the Mississippi River. The atmospheric river that hit British Columbia in 2021 might have been carrying 25 times the volume of the water in the River Nile. That's a lot of water just floating around up there in the sky. Well, when you think about that much water being up there, calling it a river, and it looks like a river, and it's moving like one, seems like a pretty good descriptive term. When atmospheric rivers make landfall, they can release this water vapor in the form of rain or snow. Atmospheric rivers are a very common thing in the Pacific North. This is basically the weather delivery system is this big comma arch that you see when you have a low pressure system comes in and in behind this long long tail it's a very common thing we have five categories category one through five five being what we had more or less happen in southern bc that year one being your typical north pacific weather system that's sometimes you call a pineapple express but we don't call it a pineapple express for a reason we're going to explain that today still atmospheric rivers come in many shapes and sizes just like your stupid heads they contain the largest amounts of water vapor and the strongest winds that can create extreme rainfall, floods, often by stalling over watersheds vulnerable for, to flooding. And it was that stalling process that really is what made the disaster in 2021. The river went, and then it got to Abbotsford and just stopped. And it stayed there, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained. And you want that fire hose to keep moving, moving, moving. And a lot of the time, we've had these atmospheric rivers so far this year in BC, some of them very powerful. We've had one that was very, very powerful, but it kept sliding down the coast, and it did give several hundred millimeters of rain to each place as it went. We were able to uh, withstand that. We had uh, some flood warnings, some high water, well, flood, flood watches and high water stream flow advisories in effect in BC over the last bunch of days, you know, because that much volume of rain was coming. That that was some of the threat that people could be seeing. And we want to be prepared for these things. We're not, there's no benefit to us not being prepared. There's no benefit to the government destroying your town either, right? Especially when we're going to put the money the money to rebuild it's going to come back from the goddamn government. So why are you scared that the government's going to put rain on your town and call an atmospheric river? It sounds so crazy. These events can disrupt travel, including uh, things like mudslides can happen. That was a big part of the problem in 2021. 
A well-known example of this is the Pineapple Express, which is a strong atmospheric river capable of bringing moisture from the tropics near Hawaii over the U.S. West Coast. Now, let's try to wrap your dunderheads around why atmospheric river isn't always an appropriate term because Hawaii is the general uh, origin for our Pineapple Expresses. However, an atmospheric river can occur anywhere on Earth, such as... Here we are in British Columbia today. You can see kind of this tail of this week, AR, still pointing at the south coast, more or less pointing at the Olympic Ranges on the American side. This is current model, current map, uh, current satellite image of Earth. Uh, here's where Hawaii more or less is. And if this very, very weak, low-level AR is coming from Hawaii, maybe you could call that Pineapple Express. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. But what's going on down here, if you have a look at Antarctica, we'll look at some of these very developed low-pressure storms that are systems that are hitting down there, and look at the tail of rain in behind. What do we have here for... Bam! Look at that. Now, this is coming from all the way out to Brazil. I'm not sure if there's pineapples in Brazil. Would you call this a Pineapple Express dunderheads? even though it's the same thing. Well, how about we come up with a better term that would describe for whenever we see the same pattern somewhere on Earth. That's what we've done. We've come up with a term called atmospheric river. That applies to here, there, everywhere, not just this one particular place where an AR might come from those we experience on the West Coast. Because you might not believe it, but you are not the center of the Earth. It's important that we have terms that are very broad and helpful to give you a visual picture as to what is actually occurring in the atmosphere at that time. That's what we're trying to do when we come up with a new term. Now, maybe you didn't hear it for a long time. There's a few reasons for that. One of them is, in general, weather language is very common now. Okay, now you go back to the 1990s, you had to be someone like me, who's a, a nerd, to have heard a lot of these titles back then. And some of them even I didn't hear back then. Now we have everybody's on the internet. Everyone's got apps. Everyone's watching a YouTuber. Everyone's watching a meteorologist. Meteorological language has become very much on the tip of the tongue for a lot of people these days. It's no longer like this mystery thing, right? So you can go on, find anything you want to know now in the world about what's going on in the weather. You're going to hear meteorologists who talk at longer and longer depths. You're not just going to hear that news clip that's uh, 90 seconds during the, well, here's the weather for today. How's the weather for today, Jim? Well, John, the yeah, sun is shining out my ass. You know, you've seen that same weather shit all the time. Now we have guys like me who can go on here and talk for 20 minutes and explain to you what's actually going on. And if you want to sit there and go, I don't want to know, that's your choice to be stupid. So the science behind the atmospheric river is such, now that you have this long, you can imagine, so we've seen that we had our low pressure storm. Now it's upside down because on the other side, of course, the Coriolis effect on the other side of the earth, low pressure systems spin clockwise. They are, uh, to us, anticyclonic but they are cyclonic. Cyclonic systems move clockwise down south, whereas up here in the north end of the hemisphere, they move counterclockwise. Now what's happening is you got this guy, he's squished in. He can't go any further this way. can't go any further this way. He's got this long tail in behind. We got better examples over here. Long tail in behind. Here's this gun. He's going right up all the way, all the way out to Brazil. Long tail in behind. And it starts to come into, say, the coast mountains of BC or uh, Sierra Nevadas somewhere down the American West, right? And what happens is as the water is forced to go up the leeward side of the mountains, the water expands and cools through the adiabatic cooling, that's called, right? It loses its precipitation. And when it comes over to the other side, the air descends. And when it descends, it warms. And by warming, um, it has lost its water by this point. It cannot generally produce cloud. So you have the dry side of the mountains there. So what happens if you're on this side of the mountains and you take that atmospheric river dead on the nose, you're going to have, and it stalls there, you're going to have excess rain coming, 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 coming. And that could lead to landslides and floods and things like that. Things that we can prepare for in society, things that we can plan around, things that we can reduce and minimize. A strong AR transports the water vapor roughly equivalent to seven and a half to 15 times the average flow of the mouth of the Mississippi River. Well, the one that happened in BC was like 25 times the Nile, the one that happened in 2021, the big one, right? And again, that's the big one because we have to dis distinguish and differentiate because these things happen all the time. This is not an uncommon weather pattern, right? But a category five that stalls over uh, Abbotsford and points right there and rains and rains and rains and rains and rains in one spot, that is a little bit extraordinary. That's what happened that time. That's what we don't want to see again in the future. But not all of them are bad. 
right? In fact, a lot of the times they provide beneficial rain or snow, and we need the atmospheric river to point itself towards BC this year, right? We don't want another dry winter. We want we want to see a resumption of that trend that gets BC so much rain. That we, it's a rainforest here. We require rain. We require these storms that are important to our province. We need them. It's not a scary word. Most of the time, 90% of the time, an atmosphere, or better, an atmospheric river is a beneficial thing, right? Until we get to that categories four and five on which, and we get to that situation where it stalls in one location, we want to have these atmospheric rivers, especially after a couple dry summers. That, these are the key to having no fire season, is to have the ARs slam in. We want this. The Pineapple Express the term was coined in the 1960s by TV weathercasters. There's nothing wrong with the term necessarily. It's just that it doesn't describe all the weather patterns that are happening on Earth, as well as the word atmospheric river does. I know it's terrifying to learn a new word. I know it's upsetting. Comments like this just rock my brain. Stoop using these stupid titles for weather. It's a rainstorm. You're just helping the government with their agenda by using these stupid weather labels. Fucking Odin the bully. If you ask me for a Phillips screwdriver and I say, well, what does it fucking matter if it's a Phillips screwdriver? Here's a flathead. You just you just want to call it a Phillips because of the fucking government, asshole. No, we have words for a reason, okay? We try to understand the world better for a reason. But anyways, the, just the, the sheer amount of stupid comments like that drives me nuts. Thanks for your excuse for the explanation of the name change from Pineapple Express to AR1 to 5. Always knew it was an unfulfilled cadre of weather guessers that invented the new approved term atmospheric river. You use the proper name Pineapple Express and you've made me a huge fan. No, no, you don't got it. You're wrong. You're wrong. That's not what we're doing here. We're not denying science. That's the exact thing I'm trying not to do here. It's a fucking atmospheric river. That's what it's called. That's the show for today. The weather isn't so bad in Wells. I'm going to go get firewood. Fucking drive me nuts. Okay, bye now. Thanks for your support. Hit like, share, subscribe. Join the Patreon. Ah!